Okay, so one of my patrons, David, the other week um, did send me a, a message asking me why I tended not to use an adjustment in Photoshop called Shadow Highlight or Shadow Highlight Adjustments. And I did send him a message back, but he asked me if I could sort of show in a video why I don't like that adjustment. And to be quite honest with you, we'll just go and pull it up. We'll go Image, Adjustments, and we will go down to Shadows Highlight. And uh, there it is with its uh, default settings. And you know, you might think, well, yeah, that's okay. But there's a couple of things really. First of all, if I turn the preview off, we do have to sort of say to ourselves, what is it we are trying to achieve? What is it we need to do to this image to make it better? And of course, until you've sort of discussed with yourself and come to a conclusion of what you want to alter in an image, you can't actually go and successfully process it, can you? Um, because if you don't know where you're going, you don't know how to get there. So uh, yeah, anyway, so ostensibly the only thing that is wrong, at least in my eyes with this image, is it's got too much contrast in it. Why has it got too much contrast? Because the shadows are choked up. They are just too dark. So what we really want to do is lighten up the shadows. Now, you must remember that that's not quite the same thing as trying to artificially throw exposure into underexposed shadows because these shadows are not actually underexposed. This image is basically, it's not straight off the back of the camera, it's straight out of Lightroom, straight off the back of the camera, if you understand the meaning. So it's full of Lightroom's sort of hideous little background nasties that it's got in it in terms of contrast. You can see it's still in Adobe Color and all we've done is just scoop this image without doing any processing to it. And um, we basically scooted it off into uh, Photoshop. So, you know, we could actually open these shadows up by dropping contrast in the original raw processing. But in this instance, we haven't bothered trying to do that. So Shadow Highlights is basically just Photoshop's old-fashioned way, and I say old-fashioned, I mean old-fashioned way, of giving you a quick fix for super dark shadows and uh, super bright highlights. And so we can, with this tool, supposedly, if I go and re-zero everything, uh, rather like that, and we've got this crackpot colour thing here, which I'll put back to zero. We are supposed to be able to lift our shadows, but of course everything just goes all mushy. And we are supposed to be able to drop our highlights. We've got to give it some tonal value, but you can see now we've dropped the highlights. So what it is that we're trying to do is to strike a balance. And um, if I just click cancel on that, and because I always forget how to bring uh, the defaults back because I never use the tool. But there are the default settings. And Shadow Highlights is really, it's what I might term, or well, I'm tempted to term, a legacy adjustment. It's been in Photoshop for quite a long time, quite a long time. And it's always an adjustment that, I shied away from because of the horrible nasty things that it does in terms of creating halos around things which I'll show you in a minute but also the fact that it is a pixel based adjustment therefore it is destructive we can't apply it um, via an adjustment layer so it is not a non-destructive adjustment uh, which is what Photoshop is really famous for being able to uh, perform. This is a destructive adjustment. So if we click cancel in the first instance, the usual advisory for using the shadow highlight adjustment uh, dialog was to duplicate your background layer. And um, then we could go and do image adjustments. Uh, where are we? Shadow highlights. 
we'll just bring it on with its default adjustment and we'll click OK. So we, we've destroyed, or we haven't destroyed, but we've radically changed a lot of the pixels in this duplicated layer. But of course, we've still got our original underlying pixels. So we could always just then for, therefore drop the opacity of this background layer. And yes, we've lightened up the shadows. We can see detail in this shadow here and in all the shadows underneath this wing, whereas before we couldn't. But here's the thing about shadow highlight adjust. If I was to just turn that layer off and duplicate this layer again, just temporarily, because these two layers contain pixel identical images, if I switch them into the difference blend mode, there is no, no difference between the two layers. And so all we get is a black rectangle. So if I now just go and dump that layer and I activate our shadow highlight adjustment, which just so as we know what it is, we can just rename it SH for short. So that shadow highlight, if we want to see the difference, or we want to quantify or get a visual quantify, quantification. Quantification, is that a word? Um, if we get, want to get a visual on the adjustment that we've just made, we can actually go and put this in the difference blend mode. And there we go. Now, here we can see the problematic parts of using shadow highlight. We can see we're generating what looks like sharpening halos around these high contrast boundaries but we're also generating this sort of a neon glow it's happening up here as well and we're getting these darker smudges over certain areas of darker midtones and it's all looking rather messy now obviously you can see this because i've changed the blend mode however if i put the blend mode back to normal that doesn't mean to say that those artifacts have gone away. They haven't. They're still there. They're just not as visually apparent to you. But if you were to try and do a super big print of this image and then look at that super big print from something of a distance that's considerably further than its recommended viewing distance, you would then start to see the halos and the sort of glowing parts of the high contrast edges they will become apparent and if i just turn the layer off and on you can actually see it's affecting the sky as well as the bird and the bird just looks an awful lot flatter dare i say now that's basically the reason i don't use shadow highlight adjust i never ever have done because it is absolutely notorious for adding halos but some people still obviously seem to like to use it because it's still in there and as david did say to me in his um, message that he, he does know because david lives over in the states and uh, he does know a, a photographer who teaches people out there and he uses shadow highlight adjust in the workflow that he teaches now obviously I've not seen this guy's workflow. I don't know who he is. I've not seen his workflow. I've not seen his images. So um, I can't really comment. But the thing is, Shadow Highlight Adjust has always been somewhat notorious for putting halos on and, of course, being a destructive adjustment. It's not destructive here overall because we've actually put the adjustments on a separate layer. But there is another way in which you could should you so desire apply shadow highlight adjustment in a non-destructive way which is actually also giving you a method of going backwards and readjusting the shadow highlight adjustment so what we'll do is we will dump that original layer start again we're back to our original image you'll notice i've got this group over here called luma and if i turn that on you can see that is a much better, tighter and more targeted adjustment. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit because all that is, is a layer mask. Yes, masking, far better way of working. But anyway, we'll turn that off so we just left with our original image. 
So we'll go and duplicate that layer again. But what we'll do now is we'll convert it to a smart object. Okay, so now it's converted to a smart object. You can see the little smart object icon in the bottom right hand corner. What we can now do is go to image, adjust, shadow highlights. We can bring it on just with its own normal standard default adjustments. Click OK. But now you can see the shadow highlights adjustment has been brought in as a smart filter. So even though we've applied the shadow highlight adjustment, it is done in a non-destructive manner or pseudo non-destructive because we can go back and we can change the settings. Okay. And we can come up with something ever so slightly different. It's still not an adjustment that I would ever entertain doing because these sliders for both the shadow and the highlight are amount, tone and radius. And really and truly, they are unpredictable because you don't really know what tones of shadow it's been applied to. Because you see, we've got 100% down to 0%. We can hazard a guess that 0% is just black. But what is 100%? Is that actually 128, 128, 128? No idea. And by the look of the image, it's actually affecting tones higher than 128, 128, 128. Because you can see we're actually getting adjustments in quite a few of these white tail feathers. So, you know, it's, it's very time consuming. It's very fiddly. And you've always got the chance. Let's see if I can replicate what you used to see with the shadow. Well, that, that's getting quite close. <laughs> and honestly, there was a time years ago when the wildlife photography forums and landscape photography forums were, were inundated with images that looked like this. Maybe not quite so extreme, but not far off. And it's absolutely hideous, isn't it? Yeah. So instead of using the shadow highlight adjust, what we'll do is we'll go and do this because that just looks a boatload better. So we will come all the way back to uh, the start of the image. And this is our image straight out of Lightroom with absolutely no real adjustments made to it in RAW. Yeah. So we're just going to be starting from scratch. So what I'm actually going to want to do is duplicate the layer. And then just to make um, masking a little bit easier, I'm just going to use Greg Benz's Lumenzia. And um, there it is. Um, link to purchase Greg's Lumenzia will be down in the description if you've not already done it. And if you decide to go and buy it off that link, Greg gives me a buck or two. Yes, he does, because he's such a nice guy. Yeah. And I've got a word of crust. So what we want to do is to try and isolate the bird from the sky. Because really and truly, there's nothing wrong with the sky. And we don't want to make any adjustments to it whatsoever. So here's a thing that a lot of people who use Lumenzia, a lot of them haven't quite cottoned onto it yet. You see, if I am in the mask preview mode and I go to light, you see, it's, it's giving me a mask of the lightest tones in all three channels of the image. So if I just click the X here and undo that potential adjustment, what I want to do is go and pick up the eyedropper tool. And I don't want to sample from in here. I want to sample from the image itself. And we're just going to click a sample and take a sampling point from the actual blue sky itself. And then we'll go for a lights two mask. And there we go. Let's just have a look at a lights one mask. Actually, a lights one mask will be just as good. So now, because there's no blue content of the bird, yeah, that's being blacked out and the sky's looking light grey. What we're going to do is just come into the levels by clicking this levels adjustment here in the Lumenzia preview. And I want to make the sky whiter. So I'm going to get the highlight slider and I'm going to move it to just around the end of the histogram there. 
So now you can see the sky is pretty much white and the bird is pretty much black. There's one or two little grey bits there, but that's neither here nor there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the select button to make that selection and then we'll go and hit the masking icon. And so what we get now is this mask. I'm actually going to go to image adjustments and we'll go to curbs and I just want to make the blacks blacker and the whites whiter so I will pull the bottom of the dark end of the curve towards the middle and we'll also do the same with the whites and we'll just pull the whites to the, just about the end of the histogram there and we will click OK so now I've got a much higher contrast mask which I'm now going to click invert so now the only thing we've got selected it's the bird, yes! But it's not a selection, it's a mask. So what we'll now do is go to adjustments. We might as well shut Greg's uh, Lumenzia panel down. And we'll just go and pick up a levels adjustment. But what we need to do is to click this little icon here, which is the clipping mask icon. So we can clip this adjustment layer to this masked background copy layer. So if we just click the icon there, now if we make adjustments to this levels um, histogram here, then it's only going to affect the bird, it's not going to affect the sky. It's really, really simple. And all we really need to do is to get this center mids or mid-tone slider and just move it slightly to the left. And you watch those shadows open up. There we go. We don't need them to open up any more than that. And be within the normal blend mode. So if we really wanted to be super picky and super correct, we could go and change that normal blend mode all the way down to a luminosity blend mode, which would negate the risk of producing any color shifts as well. So there you go. That was a quick demonstration of why I actually much prefer to use luminosity masks as opposed to shadow highlight adjustment in Photoshop to achieve the desired result because shadow highlight adjust is too fiddly. It's also too risky in terms of generating all sorts of horrible nasty pixel artifacts in your image that you might not notice until it's too late and you've hit the print button. It's also a destructive adjustment and it's just plain fiddly to use. Whereas masking and blend modes will produce a far cleaner, more accurate result with an awful lot less work and certainly zero in terms of guesswork. So there you go, David. I hope that uh, answers your little query, sir. And uh, thank you for being my patron. And uh, as I indeed thank everybody who is a member of my Patreon site. So until the next time, guys and girls, stay well, stay safe, good light, and uh, yeah, I shall see you very soon. Toodaloo.